Hello everyone. Welcome to this session on how to containerize your .NET applications using app to container My name is Saliha Heather and I, I am a Senior Partner Solutions Architect at AWS, specializing in migrating and modernizing Microsoft workloads. app to container is a command line tool for modernizing .NET and Java applications into containerized applications. With app to container you can easily modernize your existing applications and standardize the deployment and operations through containers. This tool helps accelerate the modernization journey for these applications. Using app to container I can take either a .NET application or a Java application and move it to run in ECS or EKS. We bake the best practices of building and running containers into this tool. App to Container analyzes and builds an inventory of all applications running in virtual machines, on premises, or in the cloud. You simply select the application you want to containerize. App to Container packages the application artifact and identify dependencies into container images and configures the network ports. It also generates the ECS task and Kubernetes pod definitions. App to Container provisions through CloudFormation, the cloud infrastructure, and CI CD pipelines required to deploy the containerized .NET or Java application. With App to Container, you have the same CLI options for both Windows and Linux versions. Here are some of the supported operating system and application servers. With App to Container, you can easily modernize your existing applications and standardize the deployment and operations through containers. With that, let's dive into a demo. In this demo, we will see how to get started with app to container So let's begin at the product homepage. From here, I can access documentation as well as other resources about app to container as well as download and install the latest version, which I will do now. I am launching IIS Management Console. You can see there is a simple standard web application, sample MVC app, which is exposed on port 8080. Just navigate to that application. And this is the one that I'm going to be containerizing, right? So let's go back to the command prompt. And here I will be installing app to container prompts me for with a few questions so there it's done installing now i'm going to be initializing app to container using this command app to container in it it's asking for the folder where it will store the artifacts that are created through app to container it's also asking for the profile that is used to provision the resources within AWS. So for the S3 bucket, even though it states optional here, I would recommend to create an S3 bucket and to specify that. The reason for that is when we are about to deploy the resources, we will have one master template stored on the machine itself, but we will have additional nested templates stored within the S3 bucket. Also, if we are going to leverage the feature that it can create the respective CI CD pipeline for the whole process, then these artifacts are also stored in S3. So, next uh, you can opt in to say if you want to report usage metrics. Also, you can sign the generated Docker images. Next thing we are going to do is that we will see what kind of applications are available on this machine using the inventory command. Here it figured out that we have this sample application running on port 8080. And I'm going to copy this identifier, assign this identifier. 
which will be used in further steps. So once we have this information, we will run the analyze command for the specific application that we want to containerize and use the respective application ID we just copied. What will happen now is that it checks what is deployed and based on the information it will create a recommendation. For example, how big should the machine actually be that is going to be deployed and what might be the base image that is necessary for deploying this machine. So from the analyze command, now it's done, two files that may be of interest, let's take a look at those, are these two files. Uh, report.txt is just a simple text file with information on the findings based on the analysis that was just done. Uh, if there are any connection strings, those will be shown here. Let's take a look at analysis.json. So we have the base image over here. It is an sp.net uh, application. The version uh, 472 is shown here. Uh, therefore, uh, we should be aiming for Windows Server Core long-term support image, which will also be supported by ECS, which is the solution I'm aiming for. Based on the recommendations over here, which the actual image will be based on, and actual the and uh, also the actual file path, where data should be copied from, and also if some particular features are required. This information is necessary for providing the actual container with the respective information so that we can have a one-to-one -one feature set within the container as well. So once we have figured out what is there, uh, we can actually say, uh, let's go ahead and uh, generate the container or containerize this particular application. So as you can see, all the commands you need to containerize are printed out already. Uh, this is helpful. It's only the first time that you need to think about what you are going to type. And then it is basically a very descriptive process. So what we are uh, going to do with the containerize command is to basically generate a Docker image. Also some further artifacts that will be part of the Docker image like the binaries in IIS we identified are stored within a certain path. All of that will be copied and will be part of the Docker image that in a later step we are going to deploy to AWS directly. So now we are done with this command. We have an image. Also there is a deployment artifact that will be used to generate the actual deployment deployment.json let's take a look at it so it has the image name here the exposed port um, and also here you can tweak the cpu and memory requirement also you can specify docker security options here if today you have an application uh, that is integrated within your domain you can leverage app to container provide a bit of information and app to container can do the magic for you spinning up a container in AWS that is joined to a particular domain. If your application, in other words, if your application needs to be domain joined, you have the option to create group managed service accounts. So here we can check what was generated. So let's take a look. So you can see it is this IIS sample images, I sample application images. It downloaded the base images to the same machine. The next uh, step is to generate app deployment. We are going to take this command to generate the app deployment. So what this is doing is that it generates the respective templates that are necessary uh, in order to uh, be executed. So what we see here is a recommendation or actually a cloud formation deploy command. So 
let's take a look at this deployment file. So this is uh, the deployment is the interesting part here. This is basically a master template that is parameterized referring to the respective S3 bucket that I mentioned uh, in the beginning, which has uh, the subsequent nested templates available. Let's navigate back to the command prompt. So with just uh, a standard uh, CloudFormation deploy command, um, you can execute the necessary steps. We'll take this command and run this one. So the image will be uploaded as well uh, to the container registry, which happened in the previous step. Here it will leverage that container registry the creation of the cluster is going to take just a bit of time. Now this command is complete. Let's navigate to the ECS dashboard. Uh, we see here that the ECS cluster app to container actually created the cluster and uh, task definition as well, uh, integrated with container insights. Let's take a look at the cloud formation dashboard. And here we see that the nested templates are executed through this one master template. So let's take a look at the at the application itself that is containerized. And here I am navigating to the load balancer, the URL right here. And there you go. That is the application. Uh, that is now containerized and running. In the end, we were able to move the application that is running on-prem within a matter of 20 or so minutes without any additional effort by just writing a few commands completely up and running on AWS. That was a very straightforward process and I even have my CI-CD pipeline in place. Excellent. Thank you for joining me during this demo.